Hi there, and let's get to it. When we were looking at edit decision lists, one of the recommendations that was made was to export a low-quality, self-contained video file of your timeline so that you could use it as a comparison when conforming your timeline in DaVinci Resolve. There's actually a specific function in DaVinci Resolve that allows you to import an offline reference movie and compare it to your reconstructed timeline on the edit page or the color page. I'm going to begin in the edit page where I'm going to import my XML and all the associated media. This is about a two and a half minute edit with a few dissolve effects and a few transform controls. So some of the clips have been rescaled, some have been rotated, and there's also been some color changes made. Now, at first glance, to me, it looks like it's been faithfully reconstructed. But when you're working with a client file, you can't be certain. So let's bring in that offline reference movie. I'm going to go back into the media page and I'm going to find the self-contained edit of this video that was generated in Premiere Pro. To specifically designate it as a reference movie, I'm going to right click on the clip in the storage library and say, add as offline reference clip. It's now appeared in my media pool and a checkerboard in the bottom left hand corner of the thumbnail indicates that it's a reference clip. I'm going to go back into my edit page and now I'm going to associate the clip with this specific timeline. For this, I'm going to have to select the thumbnail of the timeline in my media pool, right click, go into Timelines and select Link Offline Reference Clip. And now all I have to do to reveal it is to switch my left hand viewer or the source monitor to offline mode. What this is going to do is reveal that reference movie.mov that I had imported. And the two viewers by default will be ganged, which means that when I start scrubbing through, they will reflect each other's positions perfectly. If your scrubbing feels a little bit laggy, you might want to go into your playback proxy mode and switch it over to half resolution. On the timeline, I can use my up and down arrow keys to jump between the cut points and check to see that the edits have come across correctly. On the first edit point, I've revealed that what looked like a dissolve to black was actually a dip to white in the original cut. So this is a perfect demonstration of where you as a conformer will need to go in and replace the incorrect dissolve type with the correct one. And now I'm dipping to white. Together with comparing your timeline with the reference movie side by side, you also have the option to turn on a wipe effect that will allow you to see both films in the same space. So in this case, I can see that my reference movie was touched up a little bit to compensate for the higher exposure in some of the clips. On top of that, it's also revealed that one of the clips did not get flipped when it was reconstructed on the timeline. So I can turn my wipe off by right clicking on the viewer and selecting no wipe and go into the inspector and flip the image. Before we leave the edit page, one last thing I want to show you is that you can actually use your offline reference movies as fillers for any points in the timeline where you might have missing footage. I'm going to go into my media pool and purposely delete one of my media clips. This has now created two gaps in my timeline telling me that the media is now offline. Now in a real world scenario, you'd be frantically searching for these clips on your hard drive and then getting in touch with the editor to demand that they send them to you as soon as possible. But what if this edit was due in half an hour and you didn't have the luxury of time? Well, you could go into your master project settings, scroll down to the very bottom where we have our conform options and you could tick to show the offline reference movie for timeline gaps or for non-conformed edits, which is what we have in this instance. Now in the timeline, it's still going to tell you that the clip is offline, but in the timeline viewer, you're going to see video again. Is it ideal for a final delivery? No, of course not. It's an h264.mov file. It's heavily compressed, but this is still a lot better than having offline media or just a black gap. So it's the best thing to use in a pinch. The very last thing I'd like to show you is using the offline reference movie in the color page. Here, we're going to have to turn on our image wipe mode in the top left corner of the viewer. And then we're going to have to right click on the viewer and specify the type of reference mode we want to use. You need offline. You will reveal in this case the reference movie on the right hand side and my original footage on the left. So now I can go in and start adjusting my brightness and my contrast to try to match what the editor had originally done. And I think I've gotten fairly close. Thank you very much for watching and until next time.